Welcome back to the Crochet Crown as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this blanket. This is the Chevron Stripes Crochet Baby Blanket. A very easy pattern to be able to remember. You'll see some instructions here that may throw your mind for a loop but once you see it in the diagram format it's a really quick and easy pattern to be able to work on. And, uh, I kid you not with this one. So we're going to be using Karen One Pound Yarn today a suggesting of a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook in order to play and I'm going to show you the sample that I worked on and it's actually pretty easy. So let's show you the sample next. So here's the sample. Every two rows is the same color. So two, 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 and two and you can see it comes out to a really nice look. You'll notice that it's got a bit of a raised texture to it. If you see it from this point of view, do you see it? It's lovely but the other side Oh, 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 really nothing here at all. So it's really more of a one-sided pattern and it's really quite an easy pattern to be able to remember if you remember that all the actions happening on the front side of the project. So let me take you to the diagram. Let's uh, decipher that a little bit and then I'm going to show you the stitch sample in order to do this and then you can follow along and make it exactly the way that you see it within the photo or change it because I'm going to tell you that too. So here is the stitch diagram. I love diagrams. They're pretty easy to be able to follow. So if you want to change the size of this and make it any size that you wish, you have to chain in multiples of 14. So you chain 1 through 14, determine if it's big enough, yes or no. If not, keep going. So 1 through 14, 1 through 14. And when you're satisfied with the width of it, just chain an additional 12 chains in order to bring it back in balance so it stays in the shape. So the multiple of this pattern is multiple 14, plus 12 just as I explained. So you'll notice that you're going to be doing more of a lazy kind of ripple going up and down and you're going to notice some really weird shapes that are going on here and you'll see that it's worked into the front loop and the back loop and I know what you're thinking. This is going to be hard to be able to remember. I kid you not. If you know what the front side of the project is you can automatically do this because it's actually quite easy to be able to follow. So you're going to notice that it's really quite an easy pattern to be able to do and so without further ado let's uh, begin to work on this and let's uh, begin our starting chain. You can either chain the amount that it's suggesting of 152 or just chain in multiples of 14 and when satisfied just add 12. And today for my sample I'm just going to do a multiple of 14 so I can show you something smaller. So let's begin with the slip knot and we'll put that onto our hook and we're going to chain either 152 if you're following the pattern as is but if you don't want to do that just chain in multiples of 14. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. So there is one or that was 14. So that was literally one multiple right here of 14. So let's do it again. I'm going to do it one more time. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. So now that I have two multiples of 14 here I'm satisfied with the width but you just keep on going 1 through 14, 1 through 14 until you get to the size. Just keep a note that because it is doing a lazy wave it's not going to be. So let me just back out the camera a little bit here for you. So when you go to do this the, the project will not be this long. It'll be like waving up and down like so. Okay, so you notice that it's not as wide because it's got to compensate for the waves. Once you're satisfied with the width of it, I want you just to chain an additional 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So there we have multiples of 14 and then plus 12 at the end. So let's begin row number 1. So in looking at the diagram you're going to notice as we begin row number one we're actually heading up the hill and then as we then come down the other side. So we're going to go down the hill, up the hill, down the hill. So usually most times I ever see that we're going downhill first and then up. So in this case we're going uphill first and then down. Not that it really matters that much but I want to let you know what we're up to. So let's begin working across your chain. So it doesn't matter how big your chain is as long as you did multiples of the 14 plus 12 or you chained 152 you're still good to go. So third chain from the hook I want you to half double crochet. So just go this one, this one, go to the third and go to the back loop of the third one and just half double crochet. Okay, so just half double crochet as you normally would and then what I want you to do is that we are going to half double crochet in the next three as well. So just continue to move down the chain on the back loop only. So one, two and three. 
So what this is, is that this chain two over here counts as a stitch plus then you have four half double crochets in a row. So that gives you a total of five. So the next chain, what we need to do is that we need to put three half double crochets into that same one and that allows you to turn the corner. So it allows you to go up and over the hill and then back down the other side. Okay, so it's the top of the chevron peak. Okay, so we came up and now we're about to go down the other side. So when we go down the other side, how many stitches do you think that you need to go down if you started with five on this side? If you said five, the answer is right. So in the next uh, chain, just half double crochet into that one plus all of its uh, four other friends. So there's five friends in a row. So continuing along, you are going to half double crochet. So this is number two and three, four and five. So we this just did five in a row going down. So the bottom of the peak of the valley of this is kind of different. It's not something I've seen before in a chain. So this is, we're gonna skip the next chain and we're gonna half double crochet into the next one after that. So skip one chain and half double crochet into the next and that is the very bottom of the valley. Okay, that's where the water in the river is at the bottom of the valley. So once we did that, we're gonna skip the next one and then we're gonna go up the valley again. So we're gonna go up the hill. How many do you need to go up the hill? So if you skip one, go to the second one over. We're gonna do five half double crochets going up the hill. So one and two, three, four and five. So we've just now gone up the hill. So what do we have to do? We have to go over the hill. So the next one is gonna have three half double crochets in it. So one, two, and three. And then we go down the hill. So how many for down the hill? Okay, if you set five, the answer is right. So five half double crochets down the hill. So one, two, three, four and five and now we're close to the bottom of the valley. So we skip the next one and then just half double crochet into the second one over. That's the bottom of the valley. That's where the river is. So we have to start going up the other hill. So we're gonna just skip one and then we're gonna just go to the second over and half double crochet into that one plus four more. So there's five half double crochets going up the hill. So it's important that you keep your, your counts as you're working across your chain the very first time. Once it, uh, you get beyond this, it becomes very easy to be able to look at it and know where you are. So you went five up the hill. So now you're gonna be on the top here, the next one. So it's gonna be three half double crochets as you come up over top of the hill. And then as we finish off on the other side, how many are going down the hill? Do you see five stitches there? Absolutely, so it's five then as you finish your chain. So it doesn't matter how big your chain is, you'll end up with five at the very end. So this is two, three, four, and five. So that was your first one starting. And so you, now when you lay it out, so let's back, oh I don't need to back out the camera. So what we have here is you can see here is your ruffling going up and down just as you see it and if your chain's longer, you obviously have more of a ruffle. So let's begin row number two. So here's the diagram and what we're going to do is start on row number two. So row number two and three are each, and you can see even further, are either a front loop or a back loop. And so this is giving you the idea that it's gonna be a one-sided project. So when the, when the half moon is upside down like so, so it's like a bowl, it's worked in the front loop. So as we work across, we're gonna work only in the front loops in the ones that are indicated. The only ones that are not really done are the other two edges. Okay, so those are the only two that you don't worry about the front loops in. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna skip over the first one here completely. So we're gonna miss it and then when we get here, we're gonna continue what we already know. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. So why do you think that you're skipping a stitch here, right, and here, and here, and here? 
So if you realize is that when you created and put three into the same one you're creating an extra stitch. So in order to keep your row going straight up you have to skip one on the end here because you're getting your five anyway. So one, two, three, four and five before you get to the peak. So if you put one in there then you'll end up with six and your project will grow out this way instead of straight up. So what we have to watch for that is that kind of same idea. So right here in the bottom you remember how we skipped over when we were in the valley where the river is? Well every time we're in the valley we're gonna skip the one right there and there. Okay those are the valley ones and you'll see that happens every time. So when we move up to row number three you're going to notice that the half moon is upside down. So that's worked into the back loop. So working into the front loop in row number two now and then working into the back loop in the next row that keeps this project being one sided. And once you see this happening in the project you'll be able to very easily identify it if you're working in the front or back loop once you get used to this pattern. So that's it. Let's continue on now row number two. I'm not gonna bring the diagram back up for row number three because what I'm about to teach you in row number two is the same thing going uh, completely all the way up. The only difference is, is that you have a front loop this time and the next time it will be a back loop and then front loop and back loop but the stitch work and the counts are just the same. It's just a matter what loops you're working into. So I left you at the end of the row. We're gonna turn our work and now begin the first one and remember what I said it's in the front loop. So we're gonna begin on the side and we're gonna chain up two and we're gonna skip immediately the next stitch that is in front. Okay so we're gonna skip this one here and in the front loop only. So if you're new to crochet you'll notice that there's two lines in stitch work. Okay so you'll notice that there's two here and that you've been inserting into both of them. So if you're new to crochet if you go into the one that's closest to you that's the front loop and the one furthest away from you is the back loop. So as you begin to half double crochet you want to go into the front loop. So you're gonna skip the first one here. Okay so this is part of the first one here. We're gonna skip this and then we're immediately going to look. So what you can look for here is that you can either count it back from the very center if you're not sure. So there's three in the middle and this is the middle one. So we have one, two, three and four. Okay that is the one that we have to go into but if you were not sure you just count it back from the, from there it was skipping the first one anyway. So we're gonna half double crochet into the first loop. So just going into the first loop only not the full stitch and you're going to half double crochet into that one plus three more. Okay so you just keep going up the hill now. So with that one here so we have this chain two which counts as one, two, three, four and five and now we're in the middle one of the group of three and there's gonna be three half double crochets in that same one. So one, two, and three. And now we're gonna go down the hill. So the next five in a row will each be a half double crochet in the front loop. So let's count those out. So one, two, three, four and five. So we did five going down. We're gonna skip immediately the next one and then we're gonna be in the valley here. So in the valley just do your one half double crochet right in the middle. Skip the next one. Okay so skipping the next one and you'll do five going up the hill once again. So one, two, three, four and five and then you're at the top of the hill. So the top of the hill is gonna have three half double crochets in it. So you're thinking to yourself well you don't really see what's going on. If you turn the project around that is the good side of the project and you'll see that a lip is being formed on the other side as you do this. So the next five in a row is gonna be coming down the hill just five half double crochets. So one, two, three, four and five and now you're at the bottom of the valley. So you skip the next one and half double crochet in the next. Skip the next one and do the next five going up the hill. So one, two, three, four and five. And then you're at the top of the hill so then three into that one. So one, two and three and then five down the hill. So what you have to watch out for the, is that fifth one. So let's just do the first four. So we'll go one, 
two, three, and four and we have two stitches left over. So we can't go into the next one because then it won't uh, be even. So you have to go into this turning chain with just a half double crochet. So right into the turning chain with a half double crochet. So don't worry about the front or the back loop. So you technically just skipped over a stitch right in the end. So what we want to do is that in order to keep this looking like the actual pattern, we can fasten off our yarn and we can actually create this so that it is um, looking like stripes. So let's just trim our yarn and pull through the loop just like this and just weave it in and out of a few of the stitches. I'd go about two inches if it were me. And now you're going to work on it now and we're gonna turn around the project and you'll see that there is the, the um, raised lip right there. So we're gonna begin the next color here. So let's just start one just for fun. So I'm gonna do a darker blue, gonna create a slip knot. So this is row number three. So row number three we're gonna concentrate on the back loops this time. So we're gonna start off in the very beginning one with a slip stitch to just go right in and just slip it and we chain two. So this time as we begin to work is that you'll see that there's your stitch work, right? So you see front loop and the back loop. So this time it's going to be in the back loop. So we skip the first one here and then we just go into the back loop for a half double crochet. So we do that one plus three more. So one, two, and three. And that makes sense because the first chain two counted as one. Then you had the next one that we did because we skipped over and then the other thing. So you have a total of five again. So you're at the top of the, uh, of the hill. So you're gonna put in your three half double crochets in the back loop. So this whole row is in the back loop. And then five down the hill. So one, two, three, four, and five. So once you're down at the bottom here, you skip one, you go right to where the river is, right in the middle. So skip one, half double crochet into the, to the second one over, skip one, and then go five, half double crochets in the back loop back up. So one, two, three, four, and five. So you see what's going on there, right? So you can see how the raised edge is here because you've been going in the back loops. So that's how it was. So on the other side, it's showing nothing. Okay, so continuing along, we're at the top of the hill. Next one, there's gonna be three half double crochets in the middle one. This is the top of the hill. And then five going down the hill. So one, two, three, four and five. So we're now hitting the valley where the river is. So skip the next one and back loop into the second one over. That's the very bottom. Skip the next one and then start up in the second one over and you're gonna five half double crochets up. So one, two, this is three, four and five. So you're at the top of the valley next, or top of the hill next. So there's three, so one, two, and three. And then you're coming down. So you're just gonna go over and across, like all the way across. And then when you, when you get to the edge, you're gonna go down four. So just do four to begin. So one, two, three, and four. And so the fifth one, you're gonna skip the next one here and go right into the turning chain for a half double crochet. And you're gonna leave this color on. So this was row number three. So two and three just keep repeating itself all over the place. So every two rows you just change a color. So to begin row number two again, so you're working on the front loops only. You chain up two. You skip the first one and go to the second and front loop it only. So do that one plus three more. So two, okay, so there should be five totals. So the chain two and the four counts as your five. You're at the top of the val or top of the hill, so there's gonna be three here. You're working in the front loops still all the way across and then five down the other side. So one, 
two, three, four, and five. And then you're at the bottom where the river is. So skip the next one, go to the second over, half double crochet in the front loop only. Skip the next one, go to the second over, and go up five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're at the top of the hill. You just keep on going. So there's three at the top. So this is all this pattern is. It's just a really easy pattern. Let me turn it around to show you the good side of the project because you're looking at the back. So you can see how the raised edges are being uh, lifted up. And so when you see it in changing your different colors, you can see it really quite beautifully and it works out to be most amazing. So until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Just as a quick reminder, there is no border for this. It's just a really awesome pattern to be going. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.